let's solve for x and y simultaneously. I have x plus 2 being equals to 2y. And I have 1 divided by x plus 1 divided by y being equals to 1. Well, on this equation, I can make x the subject of the formula. I'm going to have x being equals to 2y minus 2. Let's take our attention to the other equation. If we multiply the left hand side by x and multiply the right hand side by x, we're going to have 1 plus x divided by y being equals to x. In place of x, we can go ahead and substitute 2y minus 2. We're going to have 1 plus 2y minus 2, everything divided by y being equals to 2y minus 2. So we're going to have 1 plus 2y divided by y minus 2 divided by y being equals to 2y minus 2. 1 plus y and y cancels out, we are left with 2. Minus 2y being equals to 2y minus 2. We can multiply the left hand side and the right hand side by y. If we do that, we're going to get y plus 2y minus 2. y and y are going to cancel out. Being equals to 2y squared minus 2y. We're going to have 2y squared minus 5y plus 2 being equals to 0. If we factorize this, we can do that without using the quadratic formula. We're going to have minus 2 and minus 1. If we multiply out, we shall get 2y squared minus 5y plus 2. This is all equals to 0. So y can be equals to 1 divided by 2 or y can be equals to 2. If y is equals to 1 divided by 2, then what will be the value of x? x will be equals to 2 multiplied by a half minus 2. 2 multiplied by a half, that is 1, minus 2, we get minus 1. And then if y is equals to 2, then x will be equals to 2 multiplied by 2 minus 2. This is just equals to 2. Well, let's play around with those values and see if they check out. y is equals to a half and x is equals to minus 1. We're going to have minus 1 plus 2. This is obviously 1. And then 2 multiplied by a half is also equals to 1. So our equation is satisfied when you use those two values. Uh, let's now check when y is equals to 2 and x is equals to 2. Let's use the other equation. When that is the case, we're going to have 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 1, which is equals to 1, like we are supposed to show. So that checks out. Uh, let's go ahead and do a uh, 1.3. 1.3 given 2 to the power m plus 1 plus 2 to the power m being equals to 3 to the power n plus 2 minus 3 to the power n where m and n are integers. Where m and n are integers determine the value of m plus n. I think I've solved a similar question before. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Well, I want to get rid of this 2 to the power m plus 1. I know fully well that it is equals to 2 to the power m multiplied by 2 to the power 1. Because if we multiply in numbers of the same basis, we can add the exponents. So 2 to the power m plus 1 is just 2 to the power m multiplied by 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power m. Let me just try out the same idea on the right hand side so i'm gonna have 3 to the power n multiplied by 3 to the power 2 minus 3 to the power n on the left hand side i'm gonna take 2 to the power m as a common factor i'm gonna have 2 to the power 1 plus 1 being equals to i'm taking 3 to the power n as a common factor on the right hand side so 3 to the power n and then i'm gonna be left with 3 to the power 2 minus 1. 3 to the power 2 is 9 minus 1 is 8, right? Uh, but we can write 8 as 2 to the power 3. So let's run with that idea. 
uh, we're going to have t to the power m multiplied by t to the power 1, that's 2, plus 1 is 3. So we have 2 to the power m multiplied by 3, being equals to 3 to the power n multiplied by 8, which is just 2 to the power 3. Let's not forget that we have 1 here. If m is equals to 3 and n is equals to 1, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are going to be equals to each other. So we can say that m is equals to 3 and n is equals to 1. When this is the case, the left-hand side is indeed equals to the right-hand side. I think they're supposed to be equals to 24 or something. So what will be m plus 1 when m is equals to 3 and n is equals to 1? That is 3 plus 1, which is just equals to 4.